So can you talk to me a little bit about the beginning stages of it? You know, was this a deal that, you know, was this a, a listed deal for this type of thing? Was it something that you got creative and you were like, oh, this would make a great spot for a food hall. We know people want this. What was the, how did the idea come about? Yeah, some of it was personal. Like I said, just we thought it, we were trying to think outside the box a little bit. Of what can we use this brick building for? The previous developer wanted to just tear it down and make more condos, basically. Mm-hmm. And we knew that would be a very good backup plan as well while we were sort of testing and validating the idea because just in case we were wrong and people hated this idea or don't want to pay the rent that we're asking for, then yeah, that was our was our backup plan for this. And uh, sorry, what what else did you ask? Yeah, just like how <clears throat> how was it sourced? You know, was it something that was... Okay you know, listed? Was it not? Listed? Yeah. So yeah. this one, actually we found, we heard about it through LoopNet, which mm-hmm. is typically what people say, you know, where good deals go to die. But this one, we, we, I think they were, well, I know this broker too, but he, I think he, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't blast them out to the LoopNet just only after he's exhausted his Rolodex. I think it's just part of his regular marketing procedures mm-hmm. or campaign. Um, and, you know, we got in contact with them and kind of, um, just, you know, we, we knew both options would be, would be pretty good. Um, and, you know, I think the big picture wise, it made a lot of sense to us as well in, in where we are, the San Gabriel Valley outside of LA, there's a Metro line that was extending East and the other thing was um, the traffic was really good and the school district was good mm-hmm. in California, you know, where we are, there's basically um, there's San Marino, Arcadia and Temple city. You guys are probably not familiar with those area, but you know, the schools are nines and tens, mm-hmm. and, and but people keep getting priced out. You already see the trends sort of moving East, but the other schools, they're not as good. And only this other, this other town, this area, their schools are nines and tens again. So we use essentially that guides a lot of our um, investment thesis is just affordability and schools and, and transit. This is LA people still drive a lot and Mm -hmm. people, people take transits here and there. But uh, for us, you know, the, the look, the site was basically at the corner of an auxiliary, you know, um, auxil- auxiliary highway, where if the major highway fills up or backs up, people take that, and then the other side street is leads the on ramp to the highway, so it gets like something like forty forty one thousand cars on average per day, mm-hmm. and you know those are sort of the the under the fundamentals or some of the. Uh, underlying stats that made us feel like this is really promising. Yeah, I think it's it's important. It goes back to, you know, location is basically everything. And I think one thing that's interesting too is you said, you know, a lot of people talk about loop net is where deals go to die to a certain degree. And yes, that's true. There's also, you know, agents and brokers who do what you said were part of their marketing practices to simultaneously do it. So you have to know who it is. Um, but I also think it's where deals go to die with one train of thinking. Oftentimes people are looking at it the same way where if you can get creative and look at it a different way, you know, maybe it is a deal that can make sense or, you know, maybe it's only a slight discount to what they're asking. Uh, if it is slightly overpriced where if you can have a vision and be creative, you know, maybe it's something that you can get done. And I'm not saying that's, you know, 80% of deals, you just need to be creative to make it work. You know, I would say a large majority of deals there probably are, you know, overpriced to some degree or, you know, aren't exactly ready for sale, but there's definitely opportunities on there. It's not something that should be ignored. It's just not going to be like, oh, it's, it's not the same as the MLS. Let's put it that way, in my opinion. So, um, I do think there is some opportunity. So credit to you for going out there, finding a deal and, you know, getting creative to make it work almost there. Yeah, I mean, in this market, this late in the cycle, good deals or great deals are made. They're not found anymore. 
mm-hmm. you know, we, I think, and the part of the reason too, we've been trying to utilize a lot of the ADU legislatures in California to try to uh, increase some units here, there, and, um, and, and essentially boost up our, our rent. Yeah. So you, you're doing this deal. Um, you're also doing a couple other deals. And then I know you guys are also in some opportunity zone stuff. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Opportunity zone stuff. Uh, the, so the law was passed, what, December, 2017. And it was probably around March when we started looking into it or, or March, 2018, when we started looking into it and trying to wrap our heads around the the tax incentives and some of the legislatures, how, to, how what you need to do in order to qualify and looking at the different markets. I think there's what, 8,000, 8,800 something different opportunity track zones. And I don't even know. Yeah. And a lot of them, they're just, you know, they're designated opportunity zone for a good reason. I, no offense to any of them, just, I probably would not invest in them in a hundred years. And the process of how these zones were designated, I think wasn't as transparent. There were people complaining about it. And if you're telling me there's some politics involved behind closed doors, I would not be surprised. Yeah. Um, Or sometimes they're just taking a general medium house income and slapping the zones together. So there are Mm -hmm. definitely zones that in our opinion, they're, you can, again, sort of see the stars aligning or there are zones that really shouldn't be in opportunity zones. Um, for example, downtown Oak, or sorry, downtown Portland, part of it is in the opportunity zone and downtown Berkeley as well. I think maybe because of the homeless population, um, you know, parts of San Jose, Redwood City, parts of, I think actually, uh, yeah, Lone, uh, where's, where's Amazon going in Long Island or Sorry. Long Island City. Yeah, yeah like, I think there, there's a sliver of it that's in there. Um, but And in LA, too, there are areas we thought have a lot of promise. Um, you know, you could see, like, Netflix and Disney, that that streaming war was heating up and everybody was taking up offices. And when there's – well, uh, we don't have to get into the whole – COVID thing right now, but at least at that time it was like, okay, well, when offices come, next comes the restaurants, and when the restaurants come, next come the hipsters, and then the rent increases, basically. <laughs> so we were looking at those areas, and then um, a couple other parts of LA that had a lot of promise, again, good schools or both public and private investment going in there along with transit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 